389. Let's stand and sing. I am resolved. 389. <laughs> God, we just thank you that we still live in a country that we can yes, do that. And God, we also pray for our leaders and the administration of this country, God, that, uh, that they may seek you out, God, and that we could get back to a nation that can fully see the full blessings <laughs> that you Amen. have to offer us. God, we just ask if uh, there be one here tonight that doesn't know this is a personal Savior, God, that they would uh, be convicted, God, and they would get their salvation seven and nine. God, we just ask that you'd be at the preaching, do with all the, uh, everything that goes on here tonight. The God that would be uh, pleasing to you, and we ask it all through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Maybe seated.
thing I was talking about this morning uh, about the planet Earth. Some of you might have seen it there from on the church Facebook page. If you didn't, we're going to see it tonight. And I'm just going to kind of explain a little bit of that to you so you can uh, just understand the glory of God, just his magnificence and his wonder, uh, his great power. And then, too, what amazes me is how significant we are. Uh, every one of us, he hears and answers uh, our prayers. He uh, knows what we're thinking, every detail of our life he is concerned with, and that's just such a huge blessing. Well, we're going to, just to give you a couple quick announcements here, uh, don't forget to turn in your faith promise slips if you haven't done that. We've had some turned in. I think we're around 21,000 right now for the upcoming year. Uh, we'll have these turned in for probably the next couple of weeks, but uh, keep turning those in if you haven't done so. And again, I encourage everyone to participate. If you've never participated before in Faith Promise, this would be a good year for you to start. And it's always good if you start out. Uh, I just encourage you to start out with something small and just say, okay, Lord, you know, what do you want me to give? And start out maybe with 1% uh, or start out with a, a dollar amount weekly, a small dollar amount weekly. You know, most of us go out to eat or we'll stop and get people today stop to go to Starbucks and they'll spend six bucks on a cup of coffee, some of them every single day and yet we have a hard time dropping five dollars in an offering plate you know for the missions or something and uh, and that's not right and uh, may god help us get those things turned back around to where uh, they are right um but coming up this week we have a couple things going on tuesday uh, we'll be decorating the church here for christmas at 2 p.m so if you can be here for that that would be great uh, many hands make light work so the more people we have involved with that uh, the better. And if you don't know what you're doing, uh, we'll have enough, I think, people here directing traffic and, and uh, kind of helping out with that. And uh, usually it doesn't take that long to get it done, but that's if we have a lot of bodies here helping out with it. Also, coming up this Wednesday uh, is our uh, Thanksgiving meal and service. And if you've not signed the sign-up sheet in the vestibule, we'll encourage you to do that and just put down there uh, what you may be able to bring. Uh, we'll probably put this on the church Facebook page as well as far as here's what's coming so far that we know of. Here's other side dishes. For our Wednesday service, we usually have several uh, folks come in from other churches. And uh, so we want to make sure that we have extra food to make up the difference for them. So if you could, uh, if you make a little extra, that would be great. And uh, so we'll have the turkeys and the hams. That will be provided by the church. And also... Uh, the drinks and things like that will be taken care of. But we'll have about a 30 minute service there and then we'll uh, have our time of fellowship and our meal. And then uh, also this week, if you would try to have any nominations in for deacon, uh, for the office of deacon here by next Sunday, if you could do that, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. You could turn that in to me or uh, one of the other deacons. And then uh, the next Christmas play practice will be I already told the young people, but it'll be next Sunday at 6 o'clock. Uh, we'll do the same thing as we did tonight. And then probably the following Sunday, uh, we'll probably stay over there for the whole time through the service. So there'll be uh, somebody else preaching the Sunday night service. And then the following Sunday, it's hard to believe. It just goes this quickly. But that's our all-day play practice. So it's just boom, boom, boom. And then we're into Christmas. I mean, it's just that quick. It's here. Uh, it comes around. But uh, whatever you do, don't get... You know, we get sometimes caught up in things around this time of year. We get so busy, uh, distracted with stuff that really doesn't matter. I know it's great to give presents. It's great to do these things for other people. And we want to do that stuff. But remember, take time for your family. Take time for uh, your friends, those around you. And enjoy those moments together. Enjoy that time. Um, you know, sometimes we just feel like, oh, I've got to go here and do this. got to go here and do that. And we miss out on the things that really matter. It's more about the relationships. Uh, this time of year because that's really what Christ did for us when he came to this earth, which is why we celebrate Christmas is his birth, the virgin birth of Christ. When he came to this earth, he came so that he might have a relationship with you and with me uh, so that we can be saved and have a home in heaven. So just keep that in mind and uh, try not to get caught up in all the other stuff. And then hopefully you'll find some good deals this, this week. Uh, you know, Good Friday, it's gotten so ridiculous. Good Friday, it won't be long. It'll be starting on the 4th of July. You watch. You mark it down. <laughs> uh, they'll move it back far enough. They think they can get a profit out of it. Eventually, it's no longer, it's no longer special because it keeps going back further and further and further. Um, but anyway, I hope you find some good deals this time of year. Um, 
I think that's all the announcements I have for right now. So let's all stand. Let's welcome one another to our service, and, and then we'll prepare for our Sunday night offer.
That's all right. Anybody else? Yep, Chad. March 1331. Heaven and earth shall pass away, my work shall not pass away. Amen. Another good one. Micah. Yeah. Oh, no. He was raising his hand up there. He just having a woman of witness. That was all. <laughs> Turn this church into Pentecost. Anybody else? One of the attitudes of uh, Matthew 5, I think it is. Blessed the, blessed the ones that hunger and thirst like righteousness, they will be healed. Amen. Yep. Another beatitude. Good. Anybody else? Those are all good. All right. Well, how about this? This is our Thanksgiving uh, service, our evening service. This is a little more uh, relaxed than the morning service. This is kind of what I like to look at as our uh, family type service. And uh, I wonder if anybody has a word of testimony, something you're thankful for. And I know we have a lot to be thankful for, but if you have something that the Lord just put in your heart and you just can't hardly hold it in, I want to give you an opportunity to be able to stand up and just uh, let not only the Lord know about it, but let us all know about it. Anybody have a word of testimony? Yes, back here. Go ahead. Betty? Yes. I just want to thank the Lord for my brother. He got to come home. Amen. He's doing real good. And I want to thank the church here. For all the prayers, and mostly I thank you for your love. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord. Do you have your hand up there? Yeah. Um, we're, going to, we're going through some issues with my mom and dad's age issues, and uh, this is hard. This is hard to go through each prayer. And if it wasn't for the Lord's work in this, this would be a real mess. And it's it's amazing. And I just want to praise the Lord if you will get back out of this way and let Him do the work. Right. Amen. Amen. Been thinking a lot here every last month that uh, February will make 10 years since I got saved. So uh, it felt like yesterday, but <laughs> yeah, 10 years. So um, I'm thankful for the Lord give me grace uh, uh, in time of need. And you know, I was waiting here in life, I was 27. I was 27, and uh, when I got saved, I'm thankful that God, you know, uh, put people in my life that gave me the truth. Yeah, amen. And you know, something I've seen across the years, God puts people in your life that will you'll will be a blessing to you, but it always seems to come back around. Sometimes, once God deals in your heart and life, and of course, once He saves you and you start growing, sometimes you end up turning around being a blessing those very same people that God used to help bring them to the Lord. And, uh, and that's just the way he, he works it out. And it just keeps going back and forth. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Mr. I want to thank you for help and strength. And most of all, I want to thank you for my salvation. Amen. And praise the Lord. Anybody else? Those are all good. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lord for healing and protecting, uh, even when some of us are sort of accident prone. Yeah. <laughs> some sort of accident prone, and then he gets beat up during the Christmas play. Let's <laughs> give him Lexi all her time. She's supposed to pat him on the back, and she pat him a little too hard. He's like, oh! <laughs> that was good acting, Andrew. <laughs> I'm glad he does watch over us. So that's all that. Yes, did you have any other? I'd like to thank him for my salvation. And I want to thank him for my family. Yeah. Uh, family means everything. Yeah. And I want to thank him for this church and the stand that it takes. I want to thank him for you, for yeah. passion. Yeah, praise the Lord. I'm thankful for many, many things. Too many things to mention tonight. Yeah. God is good. Amen. Yes, he is very much. That the Lord keeps us safe everywhere we're going when we're driving. That the Lord never, He always keeps us safe and we, no, nobody ever gets hurt. Yep. Amen. Don't ever take God's safety for granted. And uh, be, for those who be traveling this week, you know, pray for traveling mercies. We had some travel last week, praying for them. And we have some that's traveling now. I think uh, Daniel and Peggy are going to be gone for a couple weeks. You know, pray for them while they're gone. And, and of course, uh, you know, we have some folks in Florida and 
It's just this is the time of year where everybody's traveling, it seems like, and you know, summertime is as well. But uh, God does watch over his own, and nothing happens that he does not know about. And he's just, he's wonderful to us. Anybody else? Do I have another hand here? Oh, my God. Huh? Did you have something? The whole world. Thank you for the whole world, yes. Yeah, thankful we have a world and we have the air to breathe and everything else. That's right. Anybody else? Yep, Tim. salvation, but I'm also thankful for each and every one of the individuals that's here for the services and everything. Thank you for the one that's uh, here praying for the prayer list on Wednesday night and the ones that that's putting it all in to be able to serve Jesus Christ as a Savior. Yeah. I'm also Amen. thankful for our earthly shepherd that's behind the pulpit every time. That, the one that keeps saying things wrong? Yeah, keeps saying things wrong. Yeah. Give them a good Friday deals. <laughs> thankful for you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm thankful for all of you all. And, yeah, God's blessed our church. I believe that from heart. We have uh, a good church family. Uh, don't ever take it for granted. The devil is going to look for any opportunity to try to get into the church, Man. cause havoc and trouble. Uh, and we, as, we all need to be mindful of that. And we need to be understanding because sometimes it may be, we may be the one that is used unintentionally and we would want people, we would never want that to happen. I don't think any of us would. But if it ever happens, you would want people to be merciful and forgiving and kind to you. And that's the way we should also be to other people. Uh, because sometimes the way it usually is, is usually through misunderstandings, just a miscommunication somewhere or something little someone's having a bad moment of a bad day and uh, and then things can kind of escalate to points we never thought they'd get to so we need to have an always have an understanding spirit and I think that would be please the Lord that's the way he is with us I mean he knows we're just made of dust we ought to have that same mindset about other people don't expect perfection out of them we don't expect it of ourselves so, but don't ever take it for granted anybody else I'm thankful for the gift of prayer just so we can Yes. We are nothing, but we're everything. Yeah. I was thinking about that very same thing today, that we have such a great God that we can go to any time, no matter what the situation is, and he hears us. And, uh, wow, the power that's in prayer. It's amazing. Anybody else? Those are all great. I don't want to take any time from that. I, I enjoy this. Enjoy the fellowship. Enjoy this. Yes, Dan? I want to thank the Lord salvation and uh, I'm also thankful for the Lord's time and uh, I know it's been bringing us here to the church family. We, you know, we looked at many other churches and visited them just not knowing where this one was right there the whole time. We didn't know about it. Yep. It was the Lord's timing in our lives and when he worked this out to us to visit here and they waited until we were he knew when we were actually going to be ready and we wanted to accept another church family. And, yep. Amen.
Amen. Several things some of you have touched on is actually what the message is on tonight. So I won't have to go into a lot of detail already. <coughs> so anybody else? <coughs> Those are all good. Very good. Well, as we were thinking this morning, as I was preaching this morning about the glory of God, I've got that thing I was wanting to show you because I didn't know how many people would actually see this on Facebook. And I wanted to uh, explain to you a little bit as far as what you're seeing. And I think this is something that's just, you know, we think about praying to God. He's as near to us as we want him to be. I mean, he indwells us as believers. And uh, we are as near to God as we want to be. And uh, this is an almighty, all-powerful God. And I want to show you this little thing here uh, just briefly if I could. I'm going to take this down because I want to explain a couple things to you as well as we go through this. And then we'll get into the message here. But uh, if I can get somebody to get those two backlights. I think I can read this paper here. Maybe not. Um, I need one light. Can you give me one light on the side? Maybe once I turn this on. Okay, that'll be great. That's oh, Doug's got a flashlight right there. He's got one. Thing. <laughs> I'm blind too. <laughs> All right. Thank you, okay. <laughs> Let us get warmed up here a second. And <clears throat> thanks, sir. Appreciate that. So what we're seeing here is a picture of Earth, and this is what I was referring to earlier. I'm still getting this up a little bit. Now I want you to think about the glory of God. We are on this planet Earth right now. Seven point eight billion, almost seven, almost eight billion people. And uh, we're just a tiny little speck. I think this is Africa here uh, that's shown part of. There's Saudi Arabia. But this is going to show our galaxy. We see the moon, how the Earth is compared to the moon. Here's the planet Mercury, tiny little planet. Mars. Venus is about the same size as the Earth. Now we see these planets, Uranus and Neptune, and, of course, the Earth, right here, tiny little speck compared to those other two planets. And then here's Saturn, the size of Saturn compared, here's Earth again, mm -hmm. that little tiny speck right there. There's Uranus and Neptune. This is Jupiter, a little bit larger than Saturn. This is our sun. Look at Saturn and Jupiter. That little speck right there, I don't know if you can see it at all. It says Earth, that little tiny dot is Earth compared to our sun. And this is where it starts to really get fascinating. I mean, I'm already fascinated, but this gets even more fascinating. This is Sirius. Now, Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. This is actually called the dog star. Uh, this is, as the, all the stars we can see in the sky, Sirius is the brightest one that we can see. And you can see how big it is compared to our sun. Then we have uh, Pollux. Pollux is much larger. This is 34 light years from the sun. Now, if you don't know what a light year is, light travels at uh, 300 million miles per second. I'm not sorry, miles. 300 million meters per second. Now, a meter is about a yard. If you can imagine going 300 million yards in one second, that's the speed of light. That's in one second. How many seconds are in a year? Pollux is 34 light years from the sun. Then we have Arcturus. Now, there's the sun right there. Earth you can't even hardly see Earth anywhere. I can't even see it on there. It just says Earth is invisible at this scale. Jupiter is about two pixels in size. Now, if you don't know what a pixel is, there's several million pixels on this screen right now. And so Jupiter is only the size of two of those pictures. You can't even see it with the naked eye. 
But here's Arcturus. Now, Arcturus is the fourth brightest star in the sky. This is known as the giant red star, and it is part of the constellation known as the Herdsman. But you can see there's our sun, how tiny it is. Then we have two other things here. We have, this is called, I think it's Rigel or Rigel, how do you say that? Uh, this one here, this is actually part of Orion. The, the uh, three stars that form Orion, this is the brightest star in that belt. And this is, this is the amazing thing about this. Have you ever tried looking at the sun? Kind of difficult, isn't it? <laughs> Can't really do it. This is 47,000 times brighter than our sun. Unbelievable. That's the brightest star in the Orion belt. But yet it's only about, uh, I think, the fourth brightest star, fifth brightest star uh, out there. Then we have this one here. It's called Outer Bear. This one doesn't look very bright or anything. But this is the brightest star in the constellation that's known as Taurus. And we can still see that here from Earth. Now look at this. Remember that Sirius, how big it was? Our sun right there is just a tiny little speck. Here's all these other planets I just showed you. This planet here is called Betelgeuse. Now Betelgeuse here is the 10th brightest star in the sky. It's the second brightest star in the Orion Belt. There's the first brightest star, that Rigel is the first brightest star in the Orion Belt. This is the second brightest star in the Orion Belt. But you can see how much larger it is compared to uh, all these other things. And there is our sun. Now, this right here is the largest star that is known to man right now, that we can know of, that we know of, that we can see, is this huge thing. We couldn't get a picture of the whole thing. Our sun, you can't see our sun. It's negligible compared to this star. This star is so incredibly huge. And this, if, if you take a circle, and you make a circle, and you go from the center of the circle to the edge, that's called the radius. The radius of this star is 1,420 times larger than our sun. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This star is also 290,000 times brighter than our sun. And that's the largest star that we know of right now. Now it gets more amazing. Some of you may know what the Hubble telescope is. I'm going to read some of this here to you for some of you who may not be able to see the screen very well. All the stars in the size of our world and all the stars you can see in the sky are only in our galaxy. So everything we just looked at was in our galaxy. So what lies beyond our galaxy? Well, here is a tiny glimpse. On September 3rd, 2003, the Hubble Space Telescope began pointing its camera at a small area in the night sky. The area, about a tenth the size of the full moon, appeared to be complete blackness with no stars visible to the naked eye. Right there is the section that it was looking at. That little tiny, here's all the stars we see in our galaxy. There's that little tiny section the Hubble Telescope, tells, or the Hubble telescope was looking at. Hubble kept its camera pointed there for over four months, taking in all the light it could. And this is what the Hubble telescope saw. That was what was in that little black sphere right there. And here's something else that's more amazing. Remember, all of the stars we see are in our galaxy. Each dot in this image is an entire galaxy. Each galaxy contains up to one trillion stars. Each star may have its own system of planets. There are over 10,000 galaxies in this photo alone. These are the most distant objects ever photographed, more than 13 billion light years away. That's a long, long way. The large galaxy pictured here, this one right here in the center, contains eight times as many stars as our Milky Way galaxy. It is so large, it technically shouldn't exist according to current 
physics theories. They think is that when something gets larger that it actually ceases to exist. It, it, uh, I don't know what they call it, kind of like implodes. But all of that is what looked like nothing in that little speck. And that's it zoomed out right there. And here we are on earth with all that. And God cares about every tiny detail of our life. That is the glory of the Lord. So amazing. So amazing. If you can get the lights back on. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate that. I know some of you may not be uh, science people like I am. I like science and I like things about it, especially about physics. But uh, I don't think anybody can help but be amazed when they see something like that. That is just incredible, uh, unbelievable what our God is. And He created all of that. And the thing that amazes me, we, we saw that that one area was 13 billion light years away. And yet the earth has only been here about 6,000 years. And God created all of that with light already coming from those areas all instantaneously. Everything, stars and everything was made in that six days of creation. All of that was made in that six days of creation. And he already had that light coming from those planets so that we could see stuff like this today and even with the Hubble telescope. That to me is just absolutely fascinating. So the next time you doubt God hears and answers your prayers, you just remember how great he is and how wonderful he is. And he's the God who loves us and he's the one who sent his son to this earth to die on the cross for our sin. Man, what a great God. Well, take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 15. I'm not going to get too much here in the message. I just want to kind of maybe just give you my main points because we had a few in the testimony time that kind of touched on this. But Romans chapter 15 and also chapter 16, we'll see just a few verses here. <clears throat> I've entitled this message, We Are Saved to Serve. Saved to Serve. You know, in modern day Christianity, I think some people get the idea that they're doing God a favor by just showing up for church. Now, you ought to show up for church, but you're not doing God any favors. You're doing yourself a favor. You're not doing God any favors. God expects more of us, those of us who are his children, he expects us not only to put our faith and trust in him, but he expects us, once we get saved, to start serving him. And there's different ways that we can do this. And we find this here in these last two chapters of the book of Romans. And uh, let's look here at these verses and then we'll pray. Verse number 8, skip down up there if you would. I mean, you can go through and read through the whole chapter in your own time. But we find the word minister. He says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Skip down to verse 16 if you would. He says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Skip down to verse 25 if you would. But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Skip down to verse 31. That I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service, there's the word service, same thing as minister, that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. And then if you look at verse uh, chapter 16 and verse number 1, I commend unto you Phoebe our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea. We see this thought about ministering and service over and over again throughout these two chapters. And I'm just going to bring the highlights of them to you. We're not going to look at all the individual verses because we don't have time for that. But uh, I hope God will challenge your heart tonight to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We think about His Majesty. You think about the God who made all of that that we just looked at. We are privileged to be able to serve Him. That is who we have today. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, He wants to save you. He wants to have that relationship with you. And, uh, and if you, you can do that very easily by just simply asking Him from your heart. Say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. 
And he will do that. I did that as a six-year-old boy. I didn't know all this you know, theology, all this doctrine, but I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to have to pay for my sins in the lake of fire. I didn't want any part of that. I knew Jesus came to this earth, died on the cross, shed his blood to pay for my sins. And he rose from the dead the third day. I believed all that, and I simply just asked him, said, Lord, please save me, forgive me for my sins. And it, I mean, a miracle took place that very morning. And he saved me, he came into my life, and he started to help me from that time forward to live for him. I haven't always done the things I should be doing, but I'm thankful he never gave up on me either. And he doesn't give up on you. Let's pray and we'll get right into this. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for uh, just your great majesty, Lord. And as the Bible tells us that you are, uh, it's a word that, Lord, we don't use very much, but what a great description. You are magnifical and uh, just beyond magnificence. And uh, Lord, I pray that you will help us to realize what a great privilege it is to serve you with all of our hearts and all of our lives and all the time that we have here on earth. And Lord, if there is one in our service that's not sure if heaven is their home, I pray they'll decide that here in the next few moments. That Lord, they will trust you fully and completely and they will become born again to become your child. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'd like you to see one other verse, and I'm just going to give you the points to my message here. Uh, turn back, if you would, to Matthew chapter 12. Every Christian, Matthew chapter 12, every Christian is building. We are all active church members. Even the ones who are not in church here today, they should be in church. They haven't been here maybe for a few years. Uh, maybe they've quit going for the last 15, 20 years. They are still an active church member. And we'll see that here from this verse. Acts chapter 12, look if you would at verse number 30. <clears throat> Jesus is speaking here. He says, he that is not with me is what? Yes. Against me. Now that doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means you're working against the Lord in what he's trying to accomplish. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So every church member is active. You are either actively building up or you're actively tearing down and scattering. Hopefully we are all actively building up. So let's, and back in Romans chapter 15, I'm just going to give you these points. There are some different ministries we see in these couple chapters that we all can be a part of. First of all, there's the ministry of encouragement. You know, we all need encouraged. Every one of us needs encouragement. The, the word that's used there is, uh, in verse number 5, is consolation. That word consolation actually means comfort as well. The way you comfort someone is you encourage them. Sometimes you get discouraged, you get down. And you know, every one of us gets down on ourselves. We get, we feel like we're a failure. Uh, I can't, I mean, it's just the way we're made sometimes. The devil's going to attack us in that area. You feel, I can feel like a failure as a pastor. I can feel like a failure as a father. I can feel like a failure as a friend. I can feel like a failure as all kinds of things. A lot of times ladies feel like a failure as a mother or feel like a failure as a wife. And the devil just keeps attacking us with these things. We feel like a failure as a child. We feel like a failure as whatever it is. But God takes all of that. And these people, every one of us, because we feel that way, we need encouraged. Now, encouragement is not just false praise. It's actually just trying, it's like a coach coming alongside, like, hey, you can do this. You can get this done. You, you know, I'll help you. I'll pray with you. I'll lift you up when you're weak. I will help you when you need some extra strength. That's what encouragement is. We can all have a part of it. Some people specialize in being critical. And if you want to be critical, I'm just going to be honest with you, you can criticize anything. You want to look for criticism? You can always find it because we are nothing but sinners. None of us are perfect. There's always something you can find to complain. I mean, if, if people expected my speech when I got up here to give announcements or anything else to be perfect, <laughs> it's just wishful thinking. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not the more words that is said, the more likely you're going to stick your foot in your mouth somewhere along the line and you're going to try to give away Good Friday deals. You know, uh, there's always going to be something that is not going to be just right. But let's not be people who are looking yeah. for something to criticize. Right. Let's be looking for something we can bless and build up and encourage in one another. A weaker brother or sister in Christ may not be everything that they ought to be for the Lord. And it might affect our hearts. And we might be discouraged. But sometimes when they do one little thing right, encourage them. 
Your kids, when maybe they've been a disobedient brat for a while, they don't seem like they're listening very much. Well, when they do one thing right, praise them, encourage them, thank them so much. You will be amazed at how far that will go in that person's life. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. And we need to be encouragement. We all need to be a part of that ministry of encouragement. Another ministry we see in this chapter, chapter 15, verse 8, is the ministry of evangelism. We all ought to be a part of evangelism. Jesus' ministry was to come to the Jews. Paul's ministry was to go to the Gentiles. And all of it was so that they might seek and save that which was lost. Now, Paul caught the vision of the Lord. We ought to catch the vision of the Lord. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. All of us know lost people. They're all around us. We need to do everything we can to try to be a witness to them, try to be an example, and then try to encourage them either to give them the gospel or bring them to church where they can hear the gospel. But we need to be a part of the ministry of evangelism. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So no matter how faithfully we attend church, no matter how great we might be as a teacher, no matter how freely we might give, no matter how holy our walk is, if we're not trying to bring people to Jesus, we're missing something in the Christian life. We're missing the main thing, the main reason God saved us. We need to make sure that we have a part of that ministry of evangelism. There's also the ministry of giving. Uh, Brother Lee did a great job teaching on this last week. I'm not going to get much into this. But it's not just giving financially. It's giving of ourselves first. Give yourselves to the Lord first. We ought to all do that. Some of you touched on serving. Uh, Harry talked about thanksgiving, how Christ gave himself for us. Well, we need to give ourselves one to another. You ought to give yourself for your spouse. You ought to give yourself for your family. You children ought to give yourself to your parents. We're such selfish people. We only think about ourselves oftentimes. We think, well, that's not my responsibility. Somebody else will do it. No, it's your responsibility to give completely, fully, and just holding nothing back to everybody around you. Why? Because that's the way God gave to you. And that's the way he gave to me. That's the ministry of giving. Another ministry we can all be a part of is the ministry of prayer. This was mentioned in Testimony Time as well. No matter what our burden is, no matter what it is we go through, we can pray about it. We can give it to God. And not only that, but as people come and we have our prayer list here on Wednesday night, and as people say, hey, will you pray for this? I try to always, always stop right in there and pray for that because I'm so forgetful anymore. I tell you what, my mind just, I can't remember hardly anything. And I'm afraid if I say, yeah, I'll pray for you, a week, two, months, two weeks might go by, and I'm like, oh, man, I didn't pray about that person. So I stop right then and there and just pray for that individual. Uh, sometimes I'll do it over the phone, or sometimes I'll say, I'll shoot him a text message back or something, say, yes, I'll pray for you. I stop what I'm doing and pray for that specific need. We need to realize that's a ministry that we all can have a part in, every single one of us. <clears throat> There's also the ministry of fellowship. We see this in chapter 16, uh, verse number 1, how Phoebe had this ministry here in the church of Sincrea. And the ministry of fellowship uh, has several aspects to it. As we think about the fellowship here in our church, we need to be a receiving people. We need to receive others into the fellowship. Everybody may not look like we do. They may not talk like we do. They may not be the same uh, race. They may not be, they might be extremely wealthy. They might be extremely poor. They might be any, anywhere in between. But we ought to receive people into the church and make them feel welcome in a home. Another thing that goes along with that is greeting people. Greeting people is, this is part of the ministry of fellowship. We tend to, in churches, we tend to do this, and we're all guilty from time to time. And, and this is why I try to remind you, just to kind of shake you out of your comfort zone. You come through the doors of the church, and where do you go? To your, to your seat. Now, it's not your seat, but it's the one that you usually sit in. Isn't that what we do? Yeah. We're creatures of habit. But guess what? You probably never have walked across to the other side of the church and shaken anybody's hand and said, hey, how are you doing today? You know why? Because you probably don't know who they are. And why not? Because now you're embarrassed to introduce yourself, and they probably are to you as well. Because they probably don't know your name, and they, you probably don't know theirs. But guess what? You just go up to them and say, hey, I know I should probably know your name, but I don't. It's good to have you here. And what was your name again? And just introduce yourself. That's greeting people. You see a visitor come through the doors. We ought to all be uh, just right there trying to greet them. Now, we don't want to pounce upon them, you know. <laughs> And scare them out of the church. You don't want to do that. 
You see somebody else talking to them? Well, wait until they're done. And then as an opportunity is open, just go up and say, hey, I'm glad you're here. Glad that you're with us today. That makes people feel welcome. That's part of the greeting ministry, all part of the ministry of fellowship. Loving people. Some of you mentioned about the love we have here in the church. That's a ministry. Loving one another. Praying for one another. Another ministry is helping people. We try to do this this time of year. We try to do it in different ways with uh, the food pantry ministry, the mission up in Columbus, uh, a lot of different things we do. But we just try to be a blessing to other people. That's all part of the ministry of fellowship. And then honoring people. Honoring people. Those are all things that's a part. The Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. Well, who is due honor? Everybody that's not you. Why? Because the Bible says let each esteem other better than themselves. Everybody's worthy of that honor. So we need to honor them, try to lift them up, and try to help them any way we can. And uh, another way you can work with the ministry of fellowship is guard the fellowship from false doctrine. Paul mentions this in verse 17 of 18 of chapter 16. Guard the church from false doctrine. Don't let any false doctrine into your own life, let alone into the church. We need to guard it. Be jealous of these things that we have uh, because God is jealous of them. And then one last ministry we can all be a part of, and I know I'm going quickly through these, but hopefully God will you know, use one of these things and think, yeah, I, I can work on that one a little bit. This one here is the ministry of worship. Worship is a ministry. He actually gets the verse in, in chapter uh, 16, verse 25, all the way down through 27. If you look at verse 27, the way Paul ends this letter, he says, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So when he says that phrase, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever, this is what it's all about, is giving glory to God. Why? Because as we saw, he's worthy. He is worthy of all the glory we can give him, all the worship we can uh, behold him. Why? Because he created each one of us unique as an individual to do some specific task here in this life. He's called us all to a specific ministry. And you say, well, I don't, God didn't call me into the ministry. If you're saved, he did. He's called you into these different ministries. But he's also made you. He's, uh, we have different areas of work that he's called us into. I'm called to preach. Some other people are called to uh, be a laborer. Some people are called into the medical profession. Some people are called into one of the uh, contract type professions. Some people are called maybe to be a policeman or whatever. We're all called to do something so that we can use that thing in our life to bring in the finances to the church. We can bring glory and honor to our God in the workplace. And we can come and worship him here in the church house and build one another up and bless and do all these things. These are all different ministries that you and I can be a part of. And I'll close with this. Dr. Vance Havner, he was a preacher uh, of many years gone by. He was talking to someone and he says, you know, I'm proud of the business that I'm in. I'm proud of the company that I work for. And the other person he's talking to was like, what are you talking about? He said, well, the president of the company is God's son. His office door is always open and he can walk in. Vance Happer said he could walk in any time and talk to the boss. He owned stock in the company and cashed dividends throughout his Christian life. He made investments in banks that don't go bankrupt and where thieves can't get in to steal. He wasn't just a member of the firm, but he was a member of the family. He said, that's the business I'm in. That's the company I work for. We work and serve for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And if you're saved tonight, you're in his family. If you're not saved, he wants you to be in his family. And you can do that here tonight. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let me just simply ask you a question. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking around at me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is a personal question, and, and I just want to try to help you with this if I could. If you were to die this minute and not sure heaven's your home, I sure would like to help you. I would like to pray for you and, or encourage you, anything I could do. I would not call you out or embarrass you, even if I knew your name or whatever. I would not do that. But how many of you would say, you know, 
just to be honest with you and with God, if I was to die this minute, I really don't know for sure I'd go to heaven. But I am concerned enough about my soul that I would like you to pray for me. If that's you, would you indicate that by lifting your hand real high? Lift it up so I can see it, looking around. Don't see any hand. So Christian, how about you? Are you called into the ministry? Well, if you're saved, guess what? You're called into the ministry. Which one of those ministries do we need to work on in our life? God wants us to be a part of all of them. The ministry of encouragement, the ministry of prayer, the ministry of fellowship, all of those ministries, the ministry of evangelism. Are we doing our part to serve the risen Savior? I hope you are. If you say, you know, I can work in one of those areas, you just pray and ask the Lord, say, Lord, help me. You can come in an altar and ask God to give you help, give you strength and guidance. You meet him here, I guarantee you he'll help you. He'll give you strength if you'll just let him. Father, we thank you for, Lord, this great day you've given to us. And thank you for this invitation time. Help us just to be honest with you and do business with you. And help us to realize what a great, almighty God you are. And that, Lord, we have that tremendous privilege to serve you. And, Father, we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 252. 252. We're going to sing a few verses here of this song of invitation. <clears throat> God spoke to your heart. You need to come pray. The altar's open. Or maybe you just like to come pray for somebody in your family. Pray for a lost soul. Maybe you can pray for these cards up here if you'd like to. As we sing. Amen.